We've been talking a lot about micronutrients over the last few months, and for good reason. They are tremendously important, but it only takes a small quantity. However, if you don't have that small quantity, your yield might not be what you want it to be. Well, the micronutrient we want to talk about today is molybdenum. And I realize you may have never tested for molybdenum, may have never thought about molybdenum. We want you to understand why it's needed and in which cases you're most likely to have a problem. I'm just about to start laughing, Brian. I was, I was waiting as many times as you said molybdenum while you were talking. I was just waiting for you to stumble on that word a little bit because let's face it, a lot of people say molly. This is molly. We've got an inoculant with molly in it. We've got a starter fertilizer with molly because they didn't want to try and say molybdenum. It's just not that common word that's in our vocabulary. So let's talk about molly. What does molly do? Well, one of the things that molly is well known for in agriculture is it's very important for rhizobia bacteria. So when we're looking at legume crops like soybeans, for example, that have beneficial bacteria that will colonize on the root system, one of the things that they need is molybdenum. So we have to make sure we have just a little bit of molybdenum out there. Now, many times we may put that right in the furrow, right with uh, an inoculant, or even have an inoculant pre-mixed with molybdenum. That could be an important way to get it out, or you could just address it with your fertility program. I've talked to farmers across the country on, you know, are you using molly? Have you even heard of molly? And what kind of results are you seeing? Some of the highest yielding corn and soybean farmers across the country have said, wow, I'm always putting a little bit of molly in whenever I'm putting soybeans out and seeing some pretty good gains. It just depends on how much is naturally in your soil. If you've got plenty of molly in your soil, soybean plants don't need a whole bunch of it. They just need a little bit. But if you're drastically low, yeah, you'll probably see some big gains when you start adding the right things like molybdenum. All right, here's where I disagree with Darren 100%. Almost all soil has molybdenum in it. You just need to get your soil pH right in about 99% of the cases. The key is we want that soil pH above 6.3. So this is one of the reasons why we're always talking about, hey, that ideal pH range for corn, soybeans, and wheat, 6.3 to 6.8, that's really what we would like. We want to be close to neutral, but maybe just a little bit on the acidity side of neutral and once you get that pH up from a four and a half or a five or a five and a half you get that up to six three and above you'll find more molybdenum comes available now if you say oh well, boy I don't really know if that's enough you can do one of two things number one you can certainly test your soil if you would like to but if you're gonna test all your soil that's gonna cost some money or two the way that we would suggest is just try a very low rate of molybdenum on your farm in some trials R try it in you know split the planter in three or four different fields and soybeans and see if you see yield gain if you don't then you know hey I don't really need to do this anymore as long as I'm keeping my soil pH up well, you may get molybdenum, like I mentioned, in a premixed inoculant type product, or you may get it in a, a blend of micros specifically designed for soybeans. We'll see some companies marketing micro blends for specific crops that they get put on. Many times we'll see those micronutrients for soybeans containing just a little bit of molly. So you may take a look at what's actually in those blended micros and get the molly that you're looking for. All right, now in terms of which soils are gonna be most likely to have it, have the need. Again, when we start talking about the low pH soils, I want you to think for just a second, where do we have more low pH soils? It's more in the southern U.S. And why do we have low pH soils? It's because we've had more rainfall, more stuff gets flushed through the system. So in a lot of cases, we are talking about maybe some lighter soils. So you might think lighter soil, more acid soil, those are the more likely areas that you could get a gain from molybdenum. But in some of the heavier soils where we don't have a lot of rainfall, as long as you're keeping that soil pH up, we just don't typically see much gain from the use of molybdenum. Now don't, don't get us wrong, you have to get the N, P, K, sulfur, those big ones right first. But when you have everything else right in the soil, molybdenum might be that last little piece of the puzzle, especially for the legume crops. Well, one of the things that could be the last piece of the puzzle for you as well is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show.